Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to have a conversation with Sue Washer. She's joining us here as president and CEO of AGTC. It's a clinical stage biotechnology company developing genetic therapies for people with rare and debilitating certain types of ocular conditions. Uh, she's joining, joining us to talk about the gene therapy field, how it works, and, and what she sees as the challenge facing the gene therapy industry, especially when it comes to ophthalmic uh, conditions. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Sue Washer. Thank you for joining us this morning. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. President, CEO of AGTC, give us a brief look into your professional background and um, talk about what it means to be president and CEO at AGTC. Well, I've been in the life sciences industry for almost my entire career. I have a degree in biochemistry as well as an MBA with a, an emphasis on marketing. And really being able to marry together that scientific background and understanding together with my business training, I think it's been very, very helpful as I've made my way through the industry. I spent a number of years on the science side at Abbott Laboratories, and, and then I moved over to Eli Lilly, another very large pharmaceutical company working in sales and marketing, and then really felt that where there was a significant unmet need in the business of life science was in small startup companies that really needed to have leadership that understood enough about the science to pull together a good team and enough about the business to be able to help finance and grow the organization. And so that's how I made my way to AGTC. I, I've been with the company for, for almost 20 years now and have really grown it from the very beginning ideas of the academic scientific founders uh, into the public company that it is today. Gene therapy overall, uh, briefly, how does it work and why is it so complex? So gene therapy, what is the focus here is, is that there are many um, indications, diseases, uh, ailments that human beings have that are because they have errors in their genetic coding. So um, I think that one of the most well-known probably genetic deficiencies is hemophilia. Uh, people have hemophilia because there's an error in one of the genes in their body, and that means they can't make a protein that is needed to be able to clot their blood correctly. And so hemophilia is the bleeding disease. And so I think that's very well known, but there's almost 9,000 other genetic deficiencies that cause people to have you know, some challenges in their life. And so what gene therapy does is it says, okay, in many of these cases, we know which gene is not working properly. So let's get the proper gene to these people so that their own body can make that missing protein. So that's the very basis of what gene therapy does. Mm -hmm. It uses a delivery vehicle to get that correct genetic information to the cells in the patient's body so then their body can make that protein and it can really make a huge difference in their health and their quality of life. Now, is that a very difficult process? So uh, the process with the patient, many of these treatments can be very simple. It can be a one-time injection of some sort, uh, probably directly in many cases into the organ of the body that's having the difficulty functioning properly. In our case, in ophthalmology, we deliver the genetic material directly uh, to the eye, to the right place in the eye, uh, so that the cells in the eye can then be corrected and, and improve the vision of, of that patient. I think what is difficult is the design, construction, and manufacturing of the product itself, of the gene therapy itself. And, and that's because all biologic treatments are, are complex molecules. They're not, you know, small molecules that you can put into a pill uh, and take and manufacture easily. Uh, these are very complex biologics. And in the case of gene therapy, what we're using is a safe, and uh, a, a defective virus uh, that can enter the cell and deliver the genetic material. So we're manufacturing and designing these products such that the virus is very safe and does not cause any kind of disease or side effects in its own and gets the genetic material to the exact correct cells and, and then allows expression of that protein that the patient needs. So that's what makes it co uh, complex is designing the product carefully 
depending on what cells you're targeting, how many cells you need to target, and then manufacturing it in sufficient purity and volume that you have enough material to treat the number of patients that need this treatment. What exactly are AAV vectors, and do they have the potential to treat all of these uh, genetic disorders that you mentioned, what, 9,000 of them? So AAV stands for adeno-associated virus. So it is a virus, and, and sometimes, especially these days, people get very concerned about viruses. The, the reason that AAV is being used in many of these um, different treatments is because uh, it is it does not cause disease in humans. We've all been exposed to it. Probably 90% of the population has been exposed to AAV, but it's never been shown to cause disease in humans. And so that makes it a very safe virus to use as a delivery vehicle uh, because it doesn't cause any disease. It is also a virus that can be uh, engineered very easily because there's room uh, in, to put the correct genetic material inside of the virus. And there's all different kinds of the virus. They're called different serotypes or different variants, you can think of it. I think these days we all know what a variant is. Um, and so you can create different variants of the virus that make it more likely that it's going to get into, for, existence, for example, an eye cell versus another variant might get into a muscle cell very easily and another variant might get into a, a, a central nervous system cell very easily. So it, it's, uh, because it's so safe, uh, that means that it is very well used and, and easy to design. Uh, and because it is uh, replication incompetent, which means on its own, it can't divide and multiply, uh, which, again, increases the safety. But what that does do is make it fairly challenging to manufacture. And that's really one of the big challenges in gene therapy is the manufacturing. So you have to help that virus replicate to make it, to make enough of it, since it can't replicate on its own. Uh, and then there's many, many steps in the purification and testing of the product to make sure that that final vial that you're delivering to the patient is, is very safe and very effective. Is the safety of this virus the reason that AGTC has focused on conditions of the eye? Is it Does it lend itself better to those conditions as opposed to others? So I think the safety of this virus is what makes it, makes it very good and very applicable to a wide range of diseases. There's a, there's a product approved uh, on the market that uses AAV to treat a very, very serious muscular, neuromuscular disorder. And so one of the reasons uh, it's very, because it's very safe, this is a, a disease that affects very young children. And so you want something very safe. So its safety really lends itself to a wide variety of things. We really got interested in ophthalmology because one of our founding academic scientists had spent a number of years studying these different genetic defects that caused vision loss. And it was very compelling to us uh, what young children were going through and families were going through when they learned at very young ages that their kids were either blind and going to be blind for life or had a deficiency that was going to cause them to be blind. And many surveys say that people fear losing their sight as much as they fear death because we as human beings use our sight as our primary sense. We rely on it very, very heavily. And so to us, having a scientific founder that really understood these diseases, had been working on uh, how the diseases occurred, what proteins were missing, what cells were being affected, uh, we found that a very compelling place to start. And also, because you're working in the eye, it's a very contained organ, so you don't need to make as much of the vector, so your manufacturing hurdle is, is somewhat lowered. Uh, and also, the eye is a very protected organ within the body, which means that that virus isn't going to get out and affect other organs in the body. So those were a number of reasons why we decided to initially focus within the ophthalmology space. 
And I understand that you've decided to target XLRP and ACHM specifically. Um, you're in uh, clinical trials as we speak. Is that correct? Yes, we're in late stage clinical trials for XLRP or X-linked retinitis pigmentosa. Uh, this is a disease that is one of the more common ophthalmology indications. It is an orphan indication as are almost all of the genetic deficiencies are orphan which means that there's not millions of patients, there's just tens of thousands of patients. But XLRP is about 20,000 patients in the U.S. and EU. Achromatopsia has about 28,000 patients in the U.S. and EU. And so these are really considered fairly robust patient populations considering that they're orphan. And so we picked these two because we thought that we could do the work. There were animal models of these diseases that we could used to help design and, and construct the vectors and test them very carefully. And so that, that's why we picked these two, larger patient populations, uh, robust animal models to be able to work with, and a significant unmet need because there's absolutely no treatments for either of these indications. XLRP is degenerative, so when the, the patients find out that they've got XLRP, they, they know it's very devastating because they probably have a father, an uncle, or a cousin that has had XLRP, and so they know they're going to lose more and more vision every single day of their life until they're completely blind. In achromatopsia, the patients are born legally blind and extremely sensitive to any kind of light. It's very uncomfortable for them to be in anywhere other than a very dimly lit room, and the parents usually figure this out as young as three months of age. So you can just imagine knowing that your very, very young child is going to have these vision problems for their whole life. And so those two indications became what we felt as, as prime candidates uh, for development. And if we were going to spend the time and the effort and, and, and really do all the research to develop an appropriate treatment, we felt that these two patient populations, these two indications that had a lot of tools available would be very amenable uh, to product development. Give us a website where we can learn more about AGTC. So the website is www.agtc.com. Uh, there's a wealth of information on our website. There are links on the website to be able to take you to more information about the clinical trials themselves. There's also many, many links on the website that will tell you about the basic research that we do, uh, give you more information about the technology itself. There's a, a very good video that carefully explains exactly what gene therapy is and how it works. Uh, so I really encourage folks who want to learn more to go to that website. Well, Sue, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to join us this morning, give us this information. Uh, thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. It was a great uh, opportunity. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Sue Washer, President and CEO of AGTC. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.